B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. This is B2B Cambodia, and today I'm at the offices of Regis in Cambodia at Exchange Square. I'm very fortunate today because we have a visitor from the Philippines, the Asia Pacific head for International Workplace Group, which has great brands for serviced offices and co-working space, Mr. Lars Wittig. Welcome. Welcome to B2B Cambodia. Thank you very much for having me. Can you describe for our audience what your business model is and your products? First of all, let me start by introducing IWG. IWG is the world leader in hybrid working with over 4,000 flexible workspace centers all over the world with multiple brains, which means we have reaches, but also spaces and HQ and other brains in almost any country uh, in the world, 120 countries. Um, flexible workspace, hybrid working, we pioneered it. Our business is 35 years old, uh, approximately. We pioneered the business into Cambodia over a decade ago. Uh, and today, we basically, uh, we are about 90% occupancy. Uh, so business is really filled to the brink. Uh, demand is very high. Uh, it comes from new investors uh, entering Cambodia, but also existing businesses. Everybody seems to be gravitating towards the flexible solution. And that's obviously what we're offering. So as a company entering the market, what would be my advantages of using a flexible uh, serviced office versus getting my own office? As a newcomer into the market, or even as a local entrepreneur, uh, what it means is that the day you move in with us, you can immediately focus on what you are best at. That's your business. Uh, and we will focus on the real estate part and make sure that you have professional, productive uh, workspace available to you anytime, anywhere, actually. So even when you are out on the go traveling, uh, you can always drop into any of our locations near you. So in other words, if you become a customer or member, as we like to call it, then you can drop into any of our 4,000 plus locations. So uh, it will be relevant for you there, here. And if you should you go on vacation to Bali, Hawaii, or to Phuket, we have multiple centers and in each of those locations also. So can you describe the, uh, a bit about the economies of doing this and also uh, the types of products that you yeah. are offer to uh, I guess a, a lessee, uh, mm -hmm. that what would they be getting in a package? First of all, it's a service agreement. And when you ask about the economy, I need to stress that it is a service agreement and not a lease or sublease. Uh, the CFO will find this very important because if you sign a lease, then for whatever number of years it is, it is a liability that you must post on your balance sheet. A service agreement, there's nothing to post. And in reality, not just in terms of the accounting technical part, it is short term and super flexible with us. We make sure that you never pay for more or less than exactly what it is that you need. And we make sure that you are more productive. Uh, and we also make sure that uh, we offer a workspace that where it's not just the CFO, but also your CEO and your HR managers who love it because uh, just uh, just hiring, uh, attracting and retaining uh, talents, young talents, uh, much easier uh, when you have the, the, the right work environment, workplace, but also for hybrid working because of the membership and the many locations. What has made you successful and sustainable uh, compared to the fact that we've seen service offices come and go in Cambodia and not been able to um, be able to stick around and be successful? If we should start in the sort of like the bigger picture, globally, uh, it is predicted that within less or barely 10 years, 30% of all commercial office space will one way or the other be flexible. So it, and, and with technology uh, that makes us able to work whenever, wherever, uh, that has certainly also played in our direction. Then I would say COVID was really a facilitator also. Why? Because there were so many companies that were paying leases from multiple floors of office space when it was not used for several years even. So everybody started to appreciate that you never know what um, tomorrow will bring. 
And we also see the speed of change. If you go back till before you and I were born, 1920, if you were one of the S&P 500 companies, statistically, we now know that you would stay so in average for 70 years. Today, S&P 500 companies, they are believed to stay in that top tier for barely 10 years, barely 10 years. What is that telling us? It's telling us that predicting the future is becoming increasingly difficult also as it pertains to the requirement for workspace. So how can you enter a flexible, uh, sorry, a conventional lease if you barely know what your workspace will be, not just 10 or five years from now, but even two or one year from now. So that flexibility is what people have been, or companies have been seeking. Co-working has become increasingly important. People like to belong to a community. We have so many, in each and every center, so many different nationalities, so many different industries. We have a vibrant mix of small startups, local and international alike, just as we have the S&P 500 companies. As a matter of fact, over 80% of the for Fortune 500 companies are our customers at multiple location at any given time. Real estate prices in Cambodia have taken quite a hit recently, especially over the last two years. Uh, yeah. So we have seen uh, a shift, I believe, from away from co-working and service offices more towards for larger spaces, uh, being able to self-rent because the fact that actually rental is cheaper now than it was 15 years ago. Has this impacted your business in any way? Yes, that basically enables us to expand much faster. What you see is uh, whenever there is vacancy, as a building owner, a developer, a landlord, you're going to look to how, how to generate revenue. So in order to add revenue to cater to customers that you otherwise would not be able to uh, bring in as customers. You bring in Regis or IWG with one of our brains and with flexible workspace, you basically reinvent your product, so to speak. The building is, you could call it product development. Today is the third center. It's still in Phnom Penh. Yep. Is there any, uh, vision to expand to other cities in Cambodia? Yes, it's extremely important that we do expand to other cities. Um, it's, it's important for Cambodia, actually. I mean, from the day we opened uh, the first center, uh, pioneered uh, the, uh, this industry into this marketplace, we basically created a touchdown point uh, for investors uh, who would come and invest into Cambodia sooner rather than later, because this was their way of testing the waters Likewise, we need to see horizontal growth, inclusive growth uh, in Cambodia. And by us pioneering flexible workspace into tier two cities will basically enable other companies also to then uh, grow into or relocate or expand into uh, those uh, tier two cities. Uh, you're obviously an investor in Cambodia as well. Uh, what do you see the prospects for the country uh, in the future is it promising? In my opinion, it is very promising. Um, uh, I'm regional. Uh, I also cover Vietnam and Thailand. You can see that bottlenecks even in Vietnam are really starting to get make it very tight on investors. And this obviously has a very positive spillover effect on Cambodia. Cambodia is a place that has in many ways reached a sweet point in terms of the amount of investors and the foreign community already established, the foreign chambers, their presence, the amount of embassies that are physically present in the country. That means that you as a new investor have the leverage and the safety net to rely on. Whereas if you had gone back 15 years, you would have been missing a lot of that. And when you suddenly hit hurdles and you are challenged regulatorily or in any other way, labor-wise, whatever it can be. And I think that gives the safety that, as you Americans like to say, the nice, warm, fuzzy feeling <laughs> uh, for an investor to come in and say, okay, uh, we dare, we dare to do this. And, uh, and that, will that will be a catalyst moving forward. 
Well, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Lars Wittig of uh, International Workplace Group uh, for joining us today on B2B Cambodia. It was an exceptionally great interview. And please continue to invest in Cambodia and continue to expand. We need you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.